Welcome everybody to today's webinar, obviously featuring Andrea Collins here. Um, today we'll be talking about mastering the conversational read. So Andrea is an award-winning voiceover artist working with some of the biggest and largest brands in the world, um, such as Google, Facebook, uh, Dove, Amazon, Spotify, iHeartRadio, Lego, uh, Mattel, Burt's Bees, and many, many more. Uh, those big names aren't enough. Uh, Andrea has also had an incredible career in radio, working her way up to the top of the industry, um, which is something we can also attest to here on the voiceover side, as Andrea has been a top performing talent on the voices platform for years. So um, that is Andrea in a nutshell, if possible. And um, for myself, I am Kyle Flynn, the Platinum Account Manager here at Voices, and I also have the wonderful privilege of working with all of our coaching partners uh, like Andrea there. So Andrea, I'll quickly pass it over to you if there's anything you'd like to elaborate on um, with regards to your introduction, and then we'll go ahead and jump in and get started. I think that sounds amazing. Great job, Kyle. Thanks. I <laughs> made me sound pretty good. Um, <laughs> I'm just making sure my sound is on, all of the buttons are working. Okay, perfect. All right. Hi, everybody. Thanks for being here today. I, uh, I saw some, some hello from Maine, hello from Mississauga, all these places dropping in the chat. So thanks for joining me from uh, wherever you are today. It's always uh, midday when you have these types of Zoom sessions. So it's like, you really got to remember, okay, on uh, you know Tuesday, I got to be there at one o'clock. So thank you for joining me. Uh, maybe you had to switch around things in your day. So I appreciate your time. Uh, I promise I'm going to try to make this, uh, this hour as valuable as possible for you. So uh, what we're going to try to do today, or at least get into, is making your voiceover dreams finally come true with the tools you need to grow a lucrative VO career fast. Now, what is the most requested, the most bookable voiceover read out there today? It is the conversational read. And today we're going to talk about mastering the conversational read, something that sounds like it should be easy to achieve, but is kind of one of the most complicated things, especially if you have it in your head, what a voiceover voice is supposed to be. Um, the conversational read can be a bit of a challenge to get just right. Some people, it comes just totally naturally. Other, other times it takes a, a bit of work. So that's what we're going to talk about today. Now, uh, to reiterate what Kyle had said a bit about me, I'm a voiceover artist and coach. I'm a national radio broadcaster, and I'll tell you a bit about my story because that was where my career started. Then I, um, I was laid off. Now I do radio as well, but I'm still full-time VO. I do it all from my home studio. I'm a podcaster, a mom and a wife, and the creator of the Voiceover Profit Project. That's my big my big masterclass where I basically took all the stuff that got me to a full-time voiceover career, A to Z, stuck it all in this one beautiful package for you because it's all the best tools, advice, and discounts in one place as voiceover artists love a good discount. Um, it's modern advice. I felt like uh, the industry's changed a heck of a lot in the past few years, uh, past, past couple years especially. So I'm going to be talking about that today. Um, and I wanted you to be able to build your voiceover business uh, from A to Z. So that's a little bit about what you can find in there. Um, brands I work with, Pepsi, iHeartRadio, Dove, Burt's Bees, Google, HBO, whole bunch more, as well as, you know, some of the startups or the smaller players or the ones that might not be as flashy that you, you see on voices, voices all the time. I mean, you see these, these big, big jobs come up, but you also see these ones where it's, it's like, maybe you've never heard of them, but suddenly you're their voice and they have awesome scripts and they're high paying jobs, you know? So it's just amazing all the different clients we have access to on voices. Um, but this isn't where I started off. So in 2018, that was me pregnant, laid off from my job, big mortgage, had just bought a house. Uh, and I, I was used to my regular paychecks coming in with radio. So the clock was ticking because that baby was coming. So I needed to figure it out, needed to figure out something that was lucrative, flexible, because when you have a, a baby remote, because that's kind of way the, where the world's gone and online and I needed to do it fast. 
And so to do that, I needed to just figure out what was the sound that clients were going for these days that would book me the most amount of jobs. And that is the conversational read. So what is the conversational read? A lot of my people that I coach, they'll say, well, is that conversational or is this conversational? Because conversational, I feel like might be too flat. This sounds like a mix of conversational and announcer. We're going to get into that because it's kind of like having a conversation with your friend, but with like a little bit of a judge to it. The conversational read is relatable, which you see in a lot of the job postings trustworthy, really want to connect with the person and have them trust you, the guy or the girl next door, casual, down to earth, a friend, a coworker, a neighbor, maybe a family member, whoever you need to think of that person being that you're speaking to with that script. It is not salesy, forced, boomy. I heard um, one of the previous coaches that was doing mission audition. And he said something that I was like, yeah, was it Bruce Cronenberg, Kyle? Is that the previous person? Anyway. Yes. Go yeah, back and listen Bruce? to that one too. He had some great advice. And one of the things he said is a lot of people come to him and they say, my coworkers, and my family say, I have an amazing voice. Um, and I should get into voiceover. And he said something that's so true. It's not about your voice these days. It's about how you can connect with a script. So a lot of people come into voiceover thinking they have that big boomy voice or they can do that, but that's actually not what's wanted as much these days. So on that, in that same vein, the conversational read is not movie trailer-esque, car commercially, like that guy in the picture, announcer -y. At the same time, it's not flat or monotone. Still got to have a bit of juice to it. So you use the conversational read in your auditions when they say some of these following words, relatable, conversational, natural, casual, believable. It's a really big one. And conversational is king. Now, according to voices, and maybe Kyle can elaborate a little bit more on this, the conversational and believable categories are by far the most requested styles of reads by clients on the platform. So much so that if you took the third, fourth, fifth, most popular other styles, that number still does not equal as much as just the conversational and believable categories. That's major. In one day, I also did my own little survey or, you know, tally. And I found that 80% of the jobs were asking for conversational or believable. Um, and of that other 20%, they were still also kind of asking for that. Some of them just without actually stating it in the job specs. But when you read the script or kind of read a bit of the description of what they were going for, you're like, oh, okay, they also want it casual and believable. Here's how um, some of these posts you're seeing lately, what they look like. Everyone's just so adamant about it being not salesy. We're doing a sales video for a major tech company and we need a calm, engaging, and real female voice to carry this video along. The voiceover should feel relaxed, emotional, engaging, and not at all salesy. Some of the best conversational reads out there today, they're really not pushing it. Like they, they're adding some volume to it in post-production, I guess, just to like get their voice across because they're being gentle. They're being very caring with the words and thoughtful, almost like a person talking to themselves or lying in bed and talking to their significant other. It's these very emotive reads that are very casual, but they pack a punch. So in the opposite of a, an announcer. Uh, this same job, we're looking for a natural read of a mom in a supermarket, essentially reading off the grocery list, reminding shoppers to pick up some lottery tickets, conversational and casual without going too over the top salesy. It's like people do not like salesy, as you can tell. So here, I'm going to give you my top 10 tips for mastering the conversational read. And then at the end, I'm going to give you one of the best tips I can give you today, something that transformed my career. So number one, be a human. I know that sounds simple, but you got to stop performing. You might not think you sound like you're performing or pushing it. But if you are, the listener picks up on it and the creative director who's hiring for that job picks up on it. Connection is key. 
Being a good voiceover artist today is not about what your voice sounds like. It's about how you connect to the copy. I can't, I can't stress that enough. And let me actually, before we get into this next one, let's say the commercial is for a veteran's healthcare app. Um, you speak to the, you got to speak to that veteran. You've got to understand what they're going through. Speak to them so they trust you. Um, really think about what a day in that person's shoes might look like and how the solution improves their life, life and talk to them. Feel those feelings, emote those feelings in your voice. Let's say it's a toy for a mom or it's for a kid. You know, she's got kids at home. She's run out of ideas of what to do with them. She's exhausted. Like get down to her level and talk to her about why this is the solution and, and how it's hopefully going to make her mornings easier. That's where I'm living right now. That's why I use that as an example. <laughs> Please give me that miracle toy. Uh, okay. So number two, do not speak louder. Do not force your delivery. Um, again, we're trying to keep it chill. You know, you're trying to talk kind of like I'm talking right now. Over pronunciation will blow your cover. Um, you, you don't want to take you don't want to hug the words as you're reading them. Let's say you want to kind of casually get through the sentence. And I'm going to talk to you about a way coming up that we can deliver a script in a casual way where we're not overdoing it, but you can also still make it sound interesting and grab someone's attention. I'll tell you about that. Beware of overemphasis. We want to keep it natural, natural, natural. Mimic conversational body language. This helps me a lot. Uh, hand gestures as you're, as you're reading, uh, a shoulder shrug. I find the shoulder shrug is a good one. Whatever works for you. Maybe you're leaning in a little bit more as you're talking. I like to do my voiceover sitting down. Some people do it standing up, but if I'm in the booth all day, I like to do it sitting down. So just whatever makes you feel comfortable and at ease will help with your conversational delivery. Okay. Here is the master tip. Add flair words. Play with, let's say, one word in each sentence without forcing it. It'll make it sound more interesting. Example, Mike just found a great, here, here's just kind of a regular read. Mike just found a great gift for his wife and is using Give Today to send it instantly. Okay, here's where you can make that sound more in interesting without forcing it more. <clears throat> Mike just found a great gift for his wife and is using give today to send it instantly. Like I kind of just played with it a little bit. So feel free to play with your sentences, play with them a bit. They're going to make you stand out more. Okay. Be real with yourself. Voiceover is about being like hyper aware of what you sound like. Sometimes I go back and I listen to some of the voiceover I did at the beginning of my career. And I think, how did I not know I sounded like that? <laughs> Which is what it's like when a lot of us go back and listen to old audio. Um, you might be in that zone right now. So try to really listen to yourself with a constructive ear. Get a second opinion if you can. Work with a coach like me or somebody else and and get another opinion. Ask your friends, what do you think I sound like? Do I sound conversational? Do I sound like, like I should for a conversational delivery? Do I sound like you would hear in a commercial? Sometimes your friends can be so honest. Your spouse, they can be the most honest, <laughs> whether we love it or hate it. Uh, listen to the pros. This is something I do all the time. I'm always listening for what people are doing in commercials that I'm seeing on television or online. And then if I come across one that I love, I save it. I have like a Google doc where I'll just save those links to the YouTube ads <clears throat> or the Vimeos. And if I'm ever feeling like I need a bit of a kick in the butt in the conversational department, or just like to hear some reads that I'm like impressed by, I'll go and I'll listen to these. And it kind of sets me off on the right foot for the day. Um, so build up your list that you like, and a great way to do this is to, when there's a job posting and they refer to a previous spot they did, 
or they say, here's an example of what we're going for. Those links are like gold. Hold on to them because they're going to give you a great idea of the delivery they want. And even if it doesn't sound like you, it doesn't particularly matter. You're listening for the delivery, the flow of the words, the intention behind it. I recently booked a a spot where they were going for a Morgan Freeman voice. And I'm certainly not Morgan Freeman, but I listened to the example VO that they had in the job posting. And uh, I just kind of connected with where the intention behind it and and the delivery of it and what he kind of did with some sentences and tried to mimic that. So sure enough, if they say they're going for a Kristen Bell, might not mean you need to sound like Kristen Bell. You just need to emulate her vibe. So build your list. If you don't have list, that voiceover profit masterclass that I have, I have my 10 favorites that I refer to um, every day. So lose the formalities. In some cases, it's okay to merge words to sound more natural rather than it is, you could say it's, has not, hasn't. Because sometimes people say they want a conversational delivery, but they certainly didn't write the script that way. Um, So feel free to merge some of those words together. I do, and I've never been called out on it. Last but not least, the coffee chat test. If you were out for coffee, would you be speaking to your table guest in this tone, volume, or speed? If they'd be look, giving you a funny look across the table, then you've got to rejig your conversational read because it's not quite there yet. So I'm going to... Ah! Wait a minute. It's time to give your stuff a second. Hold on. Okay. This is a conversational spot I did recently. It's for a brand called Vinted. Don't know if anybody uses it, but it's for reselling your stuff. And they wanted super conversational. When I got on the line with the casting director, he was sort of saying, okay, like we did a whole bunch of takes and he was like, "Mm, no, still a bit too announcery. And I was like, okay, really? So we stripped it down, stripped it down, stripped it down. And here's where we got. And I like to think it's a pretty good example of a conversational read. Can you guys, did you hear that audio, Kyle? You did? Okay, cool. Sorry, I was muted. Yeah, we could hear that. Okay, cool. All right, here we go. It's time to give your stuff a second life. Sell them on Vinted. They know selling fees. Your backpack could be the secret to someone's first solo trip. Download Vinted today. So pretty casual, right? That's, um, that's pretty much what you're going for. Not to say I have the perfect example, but I'm just giving you an example of a conversational read. So that was 10 of them. If you're looking for 20, I have a completely free coaching session on my website of all of the 20 of them um, at andreacollinsconsulting.com. When you see this box on the main page of my site, scroll down, you'll see it. This is where you can get that coaching. But wait, Um, I'm going to tell you my best tip I have for growing your voiceover career after I tell you a little bit more about my coaching. So it's the voiceover profit masterclass. You get my formula to becoming one of voices, highest earners going to help you find the sweet spot. That'll make you money. Um, we have a hundred dollars off your voices, premium membership, $200 off other memberships, um, auditions to jobs, blueprint free. You have video coaching from me about how to work on your delivery, your business, your career. And also for everybody today, um, you get how to dominate on voices completely free with purchase. That's another course So you can find all of that at andreacollinsconsulting.com. Now, one more juicy tip. The single most important thing you can take away from today is do your auditions. In 2012, so I was full-time radio till 2018 when I was laid off. Since then, I I built up my voiceover career to full-time, still doing a little bit of radio again. But ultimately, 2012, I joined Voices and I didn't give it what I should have. So I did auditions for like a month, did a couple of jobs, and then I don't know what happened. I just stopped doing them. Um... And now I kick myself. Why didn't I just keep at it? I wasn't doing enough auditions. So when I rejoined in 2018, that's what made all the 
different. Kyle will 100% agree with me here. It is a numbers game. Yes, you do have to make sure your sound is good and your delivery is strong. Otherwise, you're wasting your time. But it's ultimately about doing your auditions. So I would say do 10 to 20 a weekday. I take the weekends off. Um, but so I think 10 to 20 a weekday is good. If that feels overwhelming, um, work on your speediness. Your, work on how fast you can crank those out. Don't get too in your head about your audition. Um, aim to get each one done in five minutes or less. I do mine in two minutes or less, unless there's a lot of links to click and things with a password that you've got to watch. Get your auditions in ASAP. Um, the closer you are to the top of the pile, the better. So I like to kind of visit my studio for auditions in the morning, uh, right once I get my kid off to school and then midday. And then I find there's usually a good rush of auditions around like I'm Eastern time around four, four o'clock, five o'clock. So as long as you're popping in at, at different times, enough so that that way you don't log in and realize all these jobs have come up and 56 people have auditioned already. So that would be my advice. Just get really good at auditioning and consider it part of your job. Then for every job that you land, those auditions were like part of the budget. Do you know what I mean? So <clears throat> there you have it. If you want to find out more about working with me, andreacollinsconsulting.com. Also, that's where you can get uh, all those free goodies. I loved some of the points you brought up and um, definitely around the salesiness. Uh, I think we can all relate to it in our day to days, uh, you know, whether it's a radio ad or maybe you get a phone call or maybe you go in to buy a car. And as soon as you can feel that you're being sold, you're almost turned off. And I find that today in voiceover, it's the same thing. If you feel like that voice is trying to sell to you, you kind of get turned off by it. And casting directors know that. So just like, as you said there, you're really trying to, uh, you know, feel almost like a hierarchy of feel like you're speaking as an equal to somebody uh, in mm -hmm. a genuine sense, rather than trying to sell them something. So Absolutely. definitely, definitely agree. I love some of the points you had in there. Um, and uh, yeah, definitely guys, Andrea is a very high performer on the, the platform and has mastered the conversational read. So if you would <laughs> like to reach out to her, definitely feel free. All right, everyone, as we mentioned, uh, or as Andrea mentioned there, we are going to be moving to the Q&A section. So anybody who has questions, there is the chat option, but uh, for the section, there is also a Q&A section. If you could go ahead and pop your answers in the Q&A mm -hmm. section there, I will go through, I will try to get to as many uh, questions as I can there. Obviously, we are on a little bit of a time limit, so uh, I'll get to as many as I can. And for any I do not get to, uh, Andrea has mentioned that uh, you can feel free to reach out to her. Um, Andrea, would it be best for them to contact you through your site there, or is there? Yes. Uh, that'd be great. Yeah. Okay, perfect. So go ahead. Um, for any questions we don't get to, AndreaCollinsConsulting.com. There is a contact form there, um, and feel free to reach out to her. All right. Uh, so with that said, uh, we are starting off with equipment question. Um, mm -hmm. Peter had asked, uh, what headphones are you using um, while you work? Yeah, so right now I'm where I do my radio stuff. So I have a different kind of microphone and, and different headphones. But actually, these ones are good. They're AKG K240 Studio. I think I got these for like 100 bucks. The ones in my voiceover studio are Sony ones. Um, they, they, I find like the bigger, the better. And like with the cushier ear phone bit, I I'm like, not a, uh, as you can tell, like a, an equipment junkie. I, some people would be like rattling off the kinds of headphones they use. The ones I like are Sony and they kind of look like this. Um, but you'll realize how much you can sound so different in, in the different earphones you're using. Like don't use your Apple earbuds to listen to yourself back. You won't get a accurate idea of what you sound like when the, when they listen back to, or like what your audio sounds like. Ultimately it kind of depends what the person's listening to you on, on the other side. But I think that, um, you know, professional studio headphones will give you a, a better idea of what you sound like. Amazing. And uh, I, I actually really like the uh, next question here. 
Um, Jennifer had asked, how much do you clean or edit your auditions uh, specifically when, when, you know, thinking conversationally? Mm -hmm. So I, I press record, do my first read. If I fumble, I pick it up at the beginning of the sentence, keep going. Then I'll do a pass through to edit it quickly. I'll take out that fumble. And if there's any large breaths, I'll cut those out. And those always look like a little hump before the sentence, but be, make sure you get that whole little hump. Cause if you don't get it all just right, there can be this weird clip in front of the beginning of your sentences, which just sounds brutal. So that would be the extent of the editing I do. Then I, I normalize it, like I give a little bit of boost so it sounds warm enough to minus six, uh, minus three, and that's about it. Yep, it's, uh, I think we previously chatted about this. Um, it's almost moved from a day where there was so much post-production um, to now less is more. Um, you know, obviously making sure that as Andrea said, any big notches in your waveform, anything where you see, you know, significant noise aside from your read, definitely clean up any background noise, any spaciness, you know, in there is going to be, you know, kind of need to be resolved at the source, whether it's your rec recording space or whatever it might be. But yeah, as long as your audio is clean, there's no major humps in your uh, wave uh, waveform there, then definitely less is more. And, uh, you know, as natural as you can keep it, um, definitely. You know, I agree with that. Uh, Janet asked, this is uh, an interesting one, and I'd like to get your take on this. Um, with how many auditions do you get done? How do you still find yourself connecting with the copy without, you know, obviously we chatted, you do auditions in, you know, less than two minutes uh, uh, or around two minutes. Um, she's wondering how you find the time to connect with the copy in that. Mm -hmm. Well, I'll do... I'll read through the job specs, kind of get an idea of who the, the commercial, let's say, is targeted to, the demographic they're going for, and the type of delivery they want. And then with the amount of auditions that I've done, you kind of just fall into, kind of fall into a groove of like, okay, this is what they want. Um, so they want a bit emotional. They want some tongue in cheek. They want some sarcastic, whatever the specs are. You know, maybe give it a read through first. Um, once you get in the groove, you'll find it's kind of just like a formula, like you would talk to a person. Someone falls and scrapes their knee, you're going to be sympathetic. You okay? Someone's, someone's birthday, you're going to be upbeat. Hey, happy birthday. It's kind of the same with approaching a script. What's the situation? Lead into it that way. Should only take you a moment to decide. Definitely. And especially, I think uh, it's worth noting, like, definitely it's not like, you know, you're going to leave session today and immediately just do your auditions in less than two minutes. It's oh. something you work towards for sure. Um, and, and, you know, at the point that Andrea is at, it's, it's routine for her. Um, so it's, it's chipping there. away. Exactly. Right. You're chipping away at it. You know, if you're at, you know, 15 minutes in audition now, then you're aiming for 12 Then you're aiming for 10, then you're, and you're trying to get down and, and chip away to that mark till it becomes routine for yourself as well. So just something to keep in the back of your head that you are wanting to chip away at that because, you know, your time is valuable, especially in this game, uh, you know, where we're trying to get to auditions as quickly as we can, trying to get to auditions as, uh, you know, as many times as we can. Um, your time is valuable. So those extra couple of minutes, uh, you know, really do make a difference. And don't feel like you need to do multiple takes. I don't, uh, unless it's, I don't really know what they want. So I'll give it one way and then another way. Let's say it's like a corporate script. And I don't know if they want me to go conversational or like conversational corporate, you know, like that bit of a corporate oomph to it. Yeah. I'll give both. Um, but yeah, don't feel like you need to do a whole bunch of different reads. Completely agree. Amazing. Um, and so on to the um, next question here. Um, okay, so that that kind of same type of uh, uh, kind of essence there with that question. So uh, let's go ahead and move on to uh, this one here. Uh, so this is from uh, Justin here. Um, Thanks for holding this web or seminar. It's very helpful. Uh, I'm just getting started in voiceover and have yet to make a demo. If I submit an audition without a reel on my profile, will I be seriously considered by hirers? Um, yeah, good question. Can I help? Yeah, I, I, um, I, yes, you can totally be considered by hirers because they're just 
chances are listening to the piece of audio that you've submitted for their job posting. Um, but then let's say they're not sure they have you shortlisted down to three people and they want to hear like a little bit more of what your voice can sound like, then they might go and look at your demos and try to get a bit of a better idea of what you sound like. That's where having more auditions or sorry, more demos, um, could improve your odds. And then also with the, um, voice match, uh, you want to make sure that your auditions like the job postings are coming in at a hundred percent voice match. So my guess would be that if you don't have any demos up to put in those keywords to get the 100% voice match, when you do your audition, if you're not at 100%, you're not going to be at the top of the pile. Definitely. I know you're new to this. So I hope that makes sense. And voices has a lot of uh, information on what I mean by that. And also in my how to dominate on voices.com course. I really get into that, which I would recommend. Definitely. Uh, completely agree. Um, from an audio standpoint, when you submit your audition, a lot of times hirers are going to be basing their decision off the audition they received. So definitely you have a good shot, um, you know, at competing there at that level. Um, but definitely as Andrea alluded to there, um, is what is called job match. And you will notice it on each one of your jobs that come through in the hiring tab, there will be a percentage there and it will say job match, uh, next to it. And so when a client posts a job, they have all of the same requirements in which you have on your side when you're posting a demo. Uh, so the idea is that you're creating a match based on what you have posted on your profile and what the client is looking for. So you can, uh, you know, take a look at all the jobs that are in your hiring folder, see the commonalities that they choose, you know, conversational, believable, uh, you know, the different, uh, you know, voice skills or categories of work that they post in and very good to have, you know, demos in those areas to help bring up your job match. So that's what she was referring to. And yes, it does help when looking, um, you know, on from the client side on where your audition is positioned in their, uh, you know, ranks there. So definitely agree. And something that is worthwhile, um, as many demos as you can get on your profile, um, will definitely help you as long as you are using the tags on them and tagging them as heavily as you can. All right. So with that, that does bring us um, to the top of the hour. We are a couple minutes over um, and sorry for anybody that we did not get to with uh, questions. As mentioned, um, definitely feel free to reach out to Andrea, andreacollinsconsulting.com. Um, Andrea, thank you so much for doing this with us. Uh, it's always such a joy working with you on these. Yeah, I wish I could have gotten to more of the questions. Darn. <laughs> um, well, yeah, thanks everybody for your time. Reach out to me if you have questions. And uh, I also do one-on-ones. I do a 90 minute one-on-one -on -one coaching uh, where we go over your read and we, I do like a complete business audit. So I'll look at your profile, examine how you're going, going by it day to day. So you can also find out about that on my website. Amazing. Amazing. So um, everyone, thank you for joining. Thank you for carving uh, the hour and actually a couple additional minutes out of your time. Um, I do know that your schedules are very busy. So thank you very much for doing that. Um, for anybody that registered for this, you guys will get a recording of it, um, typically about 24 hours after. So keep an eye out for that as you can then watch it, um, you know, back uh, whenever it may work for you. Um, but yes, thank you everyone for joining. And uh, until next time, we'll, we'll see you then. Have a great day.